Well, hi, Donna Salzberg here. It's a wonderful Saturday, downtown Seattle, and I'm here with Nathan Germain at the gallery. He's going to take us around and show us some of the pieces and give us a beautiful view of the things on display. And it's all Native American Northwest. It is, yes. The gallery is exclusively indigenous artists, primarily Northwest Coast, so that runs from Northern Oregon, which I'll show you on the map, all the way up the coast to the Alaska Panhandle up here. This map has a breakdown of all the different cultural groups in the region. You can see, here's Seattle down at the bottom. This is the Salish Sea, Puget Sound. This area is traditionally the Salish people. So I'm going to show you some works from each of these different regions, starting with the Coast Salish, which is an area down here. I'm going to take you this way. Here I have two examples of Coast Salish artwork. You can see this round panel here. This is a carved red cedar piece with a raven in it. So here's his eye and the beak and his tongue. And these represent his wings and the wind. So this is an artist who's from this area named Andy Peterson. He does really beautiful um, fine-lined carvings and paintings. Another example is this one, which is one of my favorite pieces. This is called Migration, Salmon Whorl. This is Coast Salish from down here. The design is meant to represent something called a spindle whorl, which is a small disc with a stick in the center that people would use to spin wool into yarn that they could later weave. Their weavings were totally famous and very valuable, and they were quite popular up and down the coast. So this has become a symbol of Coast Salish art and culture. In this one, you can see the artist, Kelly Canal. She's fabulous. She's carved these salmon heads. Each one of these is a salmon head. Some are facing in and some are facing out. And the design is meant to look like it's in motion. So you can get a sense of how the salmon run. They come up the river, they go back up to sea, and so on for, forever. These little copper pieces actually represent the row the, of the, the fish that would be floating in the river. So the next thing I'm going to show you is something that's totally different. It's from the Columbia River Valley. It's this piece right here. You can see it looks quite a bit different from what we've seen earlier with all the geometric patterns and designs. This is done by the Chinook people and it actually represents a spiritual concept instead of a physical concept. This is titled The Sun um, and Its Relatives. So this character right here actually represents the spiritual version of the sun. He's obviously very high ranking. You can see his face. He has this big, beautiful headdress on with pieces that come down the sides. These were originally made out of beads and shells and beaver fur for really popular people. So you can see his relatives up there, which generally would be moons and stars, and sometimes he does things like meteors as well. So this is a really interesting um, depiction of something that's very traditional for the Chinook people of the Columbia River Valley. I'll show you this. This piece is actually a killer whale rattle, and I'm going to get the map out again and show you we're moving up the coast. This is this territory here is the Kwakwakiwak, or Kwakutl, they used to be known as. They have a really bold style with lots of colors, lots of bright colors. So this you can see, uh, this is the handle, and this is the design of the killer whale that's carved on it, with the big dorsal fin and the tail flukes and the pectoral fins. And these would have been used during performances. The oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how they would have been so they would have sounded when there were quite a few of them in use. Uh, let's see, I'm going to show you another piece that comes from this area here. It is this fun piece 
which tells a story. So this is from the Nichano people. And this is a wall carving that tells a story in the olden days of the Nichano people. In this story, there's Raymond here with his black beak straight, and those are his feet and his wings. And this on the top, of course, is the seagull. You can see this wings and the orange beak. And in this story, seagull has stolen the sun and taken it into his house and hidden it away. So everybody, of course, is pretty upset because they can't see anything, they can't do anything, they're mad, and Seagull won't give it back. So Raven finally gets fed up, and he goes to the ocean and he picks up all of these sea urchins and puts them outside the door of Seagull's house. So when Seagull comes out, he steps on them, ah, 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 and he's quite miserable because he can't get them out. So Raven says, if you give the sun back, I'll take these spikes out of your feet and things will be fine. So of course, the seagull had to agree to that so that we can have the sun back. So he's done this interesting piece that shows there's an upside down human face, which of course represents us as a part of the whole community. It's beautiful. Stunning. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you a couple of other pieces. I'm going to use the map one more time to show you the Simshian area. This is Haida Gwaii, Queen Charlotte Islands. This is the Alaska Panhandle. This area here is the Simshian. And the Simshian artwork is very traditional. It's mostly what we consider Northwest Coast Native artwork to look like. So here's a, an example in a print. And this one is done by David Boxley, and he he created this to honor his 40th anniversary of being an artist and a carver. You can see how classic and well balanced all of these form lines and designs are. So these are the human people right here with their hands out like this, and inside is an eagle, which is David's family crest. So here's the eye and the sharp beak, and in the mouth you can see that little human profile right there. There's the wing with the feathers, the body, and the tail feathers. In the red, which is the secondary design element, is his hand holding an adze, which is a tool that was used to chop the wood and carve things out. So that's really what this piece is about, is him being the carver for so long. So you can see his feet right there. These are all designed very specifically. Every little form line has a particular structure that has to be followed in order for this to be a truly traditional piece. And David is a master of the traditions. He really mm -hmm. sticks with it. There's um, his, uh, a young man that he taught who did this paddle, which is ceremonial, and shows you an orca that's down here. So you can see how every line and every shape is very well balanced, very specific. This is a classic symmetry design. This is a whale. He's going down. This is his tail flips that's flipped over. So this one would have been used at the performances when you would come into the room. A group of people would have these. For other paddles, we have more over here which can show a little more variety. So these paddles are actually real paddles for use. They are carved in the traditional fashion or some of them just painted. We have two Coast Salish ones, which you'll remember is down here in our area. And this is a red salmon. So you know that it's, it's the season, the salmon's running up the river. And you can see the fins and the tails down here. And this really colorful one, is Thunderbird. And Thunderbird is a supernatural creature that lives in the mountains. And he's really, really large, and you can actually get him to help you out if you can accomplish a whole bunch of set tasks, which are really difficult to do. But here he is with his beak going down and his wings coming up with his big feet right there. So these pointed tips are used to navigate the water. You can use them just this high in the water so you can move around, or you can actually use them to push off, push things away. If you get close to this one, you'll actually see something really fabulous. This artist has done this, this uh, raven with all this abalone shell. Abalone shell is a really important symbol of wealth. 
It was actually traded all the way up from Northern California, and they would use it specifically on pieces that were supposed to express value and wealth. So here the raven's got his beak down here, his mouth is filled with the shells, and his body's up here. This is only one artist that really does this. His name is Moy Sutherland, and he does just absolutely beautiful, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to look upward at this piece, this one's really fun. This is also Moy Sutherland, and this one he did as an homage to his teacher, who was very, very famous. He made a, a piece like this that's in the Smithsonian right now. This is a transformation piece, I'm going to simply buy it. That you can see this white figure on the side, he's called Pootness, and Pootness is a sea creature, he lives along the oceans. Really dramatic, isn't it? Imagine this on the dance floor. So this shaman inside, you can see the bone in his nose and his little spiky hair. He uh, is responsible for saving a whole group of Nuchano villages when they were starving, there was no food. And he actually used the spirit of this Pukness to reach out to this whale, which you can see painted on the inside. It's doubled over to um, to come ashore so that the people had some sustenance and he saved the village. So this is a really important mm -hmm. historical character. You see the two eye pillars? This is the, his ability to trans, transfer his soul from one world to the next, which is really wonderful. So I mean, this is just a really fabulous dramatic piece. Lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Oh, here, I want to show you another one. As we were talking about paddles, mm -hmm. this paddle, you'll remember the Chinookan panel that had the sun and his relatives in it. This paddle actually is a traditional Chinook paddle. The prongs here are very specific because this is a river paddle, not an ocean paddle. So they had prongs that could be used to push rocks or, you know, logs or anything plots in, in the water. Uh, and keep the canoes from getting hit. This image right here represents the Willamette and the Columbia that meet. So this is the confluence. This is that spiritual version of the confluence of the river in the inside. It's fabulous. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Let's see. Oh, I'll show you this one. This one is really a wonderful piece. So this is an unpainted, obviously, it's just deeply carved. This is Hiltzak, which is one of the, the mid-coast uh, cultures. And this is the story of Raven stealing the light, which is pretty popular. In this story, Raven had heard about a man that kept uh, some ball of light hidden away in a box, and he couldn't get at it, and he really wanted it. So he transformed himself into a pine needle and floated in the drinking water of that man's daughter. So she actually got pregnant with this baby, had the baby, and it was this little raven, raven human. But of course you can't see anything because there's no sun. The, the sun, the ball, ball of light is hidden away. So they don't know how funny he looks. But in this story, he spends years and years and years coaxing his grandfather into letting him see what's inside the box. And of course, grandfathers always give in to their grandchildren. And that's what happened. So as soon as Raven saw the light in the box, he snatched it in his beak, changed back into his bird form, and flew out the smoke hole into the sky. It's actually the smoke hole that made him black. He was not black before that, he was white. And so since he brought the sunlight out, all kinds of things happened. Things could grow, the ice would melt, rivers would flow, all kinds of things. So in this piece, this artist, Dean Hunt, is actually showing that moment of transformation. So you can kind of see how he has bird talons here, but this is a little bit more like a foot. His wing here hasn't actually got any feathers like it does there. It's just got these, you know, images. So he has these legs that look like a little boy. His head is done in the round, so it looks like a little youngster. And these 
are these, the wind. So they're blowing the wind here, and blowing the wind there, which is what propels him up into the sky. So this piece is actually showing a very precise moment in that myth of Raven putting the light in the sky. Mm. This one is really wonderful. It's just beautiful. You can see this profile face right here, the nose, the mouth, and the eyes, which is really that human aspect of the, the raven, mid-transformation. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I'm going to show you this mask. This one is another Pukwakiwak mask. This is something that people have seen before. They have um, a giant sculpture of this character in Pioneer Square in Occidental Park, which has its arms out and it's, you know, one of those Seattle must-see things. So this character, her name is Unuqua. She's a wild woman of the woods. And she's kind of this dual-purpose mythical creature who has um, the ability to give people tons of wealth. Uh, she can give you coppers, furs, blankets, all kinds of things. So this is a classic model of Zunipa, the wild woman of the woods. Wow. Mm -hmm. She's scary looking. She is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's an ogress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's really quite wonderful. And she's brilliantly carved, too. You can see all the tool marks that the artist left on there. He didn't sand any of it. It's all the fine little details from his knife, which is beautiful. Most artists would sand it down so you can't see any slips they may have made or anything like that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you one last one, which is from one of my favorite artists. We're going back over here. She's a uh, lady from Alaska. She's a really wonderful young woman who's doing some things that are contemporary and humorous and have some different ideas behind them. She actually had a solo exhibit at the Fry Museum a few years back that was really, really popular. This is kind of a funny one. So you can see she's done these really traditional form elements like we saw in other pieces. But you can see this guy's a little bit, you know, he's got a frown and his brows are knit and he's kind of grouchy looking with his hands on his hips right here. This one, this one's really happy. She's got her hands in the air. She's got a great big smile on her. It's called Regular. And that's a reference to Allison's love for coffee. She loves <laughs> coffee. She puts coffee things in almost all of her pieces. So you get, when you see that, you're obviously decaf regular. It's a really great mood and it's really quite funny. So this is Allison uh, Brenner, who really is somebody that's going to make a lot of interesting pieces in the future. She's mm -hmm. quite wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. The tour, that's the visit of Steinberg Native Gallery. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys can come down and see us sometime too. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you so much.